All right. Thank you, Kelly and Tiffany, for being here with me. I'm so excited to have you. And um, for anyone who's watching who doesn't know me, my name is Dr. Rose Schloff. I'm an intimacy coach and pelvic floor physical therapist here at Comprehensive Therapy Services. So um, Kelly and Tiffany, can you tell me who you are, what you do, and who you help? Yes. Yes, I'm Tiffany. And I'm Kelly. And we are licensed midwives. We help women to uh, look for alternative options to traditional care for all of their well woman, pregnancy, postpartum, uh, premenopausal, menopausal, postmenopausal, all women's health spectrum. Um, we take care of in our office in San Marcos. That's yeah, the awesome. main uh, the main aspect of what we do here is helping women and families have their babies in their homes. Uh, but I think that's in general what people think about when they think about midwives or at least out of hospital midwives. Uh, but yes, as Tiffany said, we provide a lot more services beyond uh, just the uh, childbearing experience. Yeah, that's awesome that you clarified that. I think midwives like yes, home birth and, you know, transition through that pregnancy to postpartum period is so powerful to have a midwife on your, on your team. But yeah, like, like pre-menopause, during menopause, you can also benefit from a midwife. And um, I know that you two have a lot of different passions. So um, if you could just kind of tell me about like some of the ways that you're different than somebody might find in like a traditional medical model, model or like a traditional well woman's visit. Yeah, so um, our philosophy about health and our philosophy about wellness is uh, more from a holistic model. So we are looking at symptoms. We are trying to treat um, specific acute issues, but we're also looking at how this potential issue or how your life in general um, is affected by and affects also your spiritual health, your emotional health, your mental health, your, um, your sexual health, you know, and so you can come in with a period problem and we can say like, okay, let's take a look at this period problem, but also what are all the things that contribute to it? Um, and we also uh, have the framework of like root cause medicine. So we're looking at, okay, so you have this period problem, um, but it's not, you know, you don't have very heavy bleeding just because your uterus is angry, right? Or like, you don't have very heavy bleeding just because um, it's just genetic that runs in your family. And that's just a thing. We're like, no, 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 like, let's dive deeper and deeper and deeper and treat the actual issue that's going on um, because that supports the whole person better. And so then now we're improving the heavy bleeding um, with periods, but we're also improving sleep <laughs> and relationship quality and exercise and right. All of these things are layered. So we don't look at just the symptom and try to treat the symptom and put a bandaid on it and send you out the door. We're really like, let's unfold and look and spend some time digging and resurfacing and uh, sorting things out from the bottom up. I love that. I often talk about like peeling the onion and what you described just totally resonates with me of that like, okay, we're, we're not just saying like, oh, periods are heavy. Let's just peel that layer. Oh, okay. It's also impacting your sleep. Oh, well, let's peel that layer. Oh, it's also impacting your exercise and your relationship. And um, I, I just love that you do take the time to dive deeper and you do take the time to um, look a little bit more at what's going on under, under the surface. Um, so you mentioned heavy bleeding and period problems. What are some other really common period problems that people come to you with that maybe don't even realize it's a problem? I think so many women are like, this is just what periods are, right? Like, Yes, the, I'm, most often when we're discussing uh, well woman care, when we're discussing period stuff in general, uh, some of the biggest problems are actually the ones that women are like, well, and there's this and this, but like, that's totally normal, right? And then we have to peel back again and say, okay, so what actually is a normal period? What are normal symptoms of a period? And what is common? 
So Mm -hmm. just trying to help people figure out, oh, this thing that I've accepted as truth, uh, periods are supposed to be terrible, that it's okay that I'm in terrible pain with these horrific cramps for a couple days. Like that's just how periods are for some people and that's okay. Um, We've kind of been sold a lie about those things uh, just in terms of how common they end up being. And we get the opportunity to help people recognize like, oh, there's actually freedom from this. Oh, like there's hope that I don't have to live in uh, kind of servitude to this experience every month that they actually can exert some power and change over their bodies. Uh, And oftentimes it's uh, pretty simple, straightforward things that they can do that they start getting these small gains and get excited about how it snowballs and affects things. So um, things like headaches, uh, cramping, uh, just even the consistency uh, or inconsistency of their cycle, um, mental health things that come along with that. A lot of times people are like, oh, that's just normal that I'm so anxious or that I feel depressed Mm -hmm. for these two full weeks or whatever. And it's, uh, it's sweet and also a bit heartbreaking too, to, uh, witness how normalized we have made terrible period stuff and terrible just hormonal stuff for women in general by sweeping a lot of it under the rug. Right. Right. So often we as pelvic PTs talk about like common does not equal normal. And I'm, I know that you two totally agree with that. So um, for anyone who's listening, who doesn't quite know, like exactly what normal might look like, what would you say a normal period should, I mean, I hate the word should, but a <laughs> typical period. <laughs> yeah, like what are we looking like? for? How do you know if you don't have any period problems? <laughs> right? Yes. Um, So this is a period that is coming regularly, typically between like 27 and 30 days, but preferably 28. 28 really is a cycle that most women's bodies want to be working on. And when it deviates too much from that, then we really want to look at that first phase of the cycle. Um, What's happening there with hormones that are potentially shortening or delaying the whole cycle. So I think consistency and regularity is very important, but it's a period that starts with a heavier flow and goes lighter and lighter as the days progress. Um, It's a period that is only three or four days long. It's a period that starts. (laughs) (laughs) It's a period that starts with fresh, bright blood and continues on with red bleeding. So you, there's an absence of clots, there's an absence of really dark brownish or black um, blood color, um, there's an absence of cramping, there's an absence of um, moodiness, bloating, digestive discomfort, There's an absence of hormonal acne throughout the cycle. I mean, there's just so many pieces that we have said like, no, that's just it. Like I just get breakouts at this time or like, no, this is the time of the month I get the headache or um, yeah, I mean, I have very heavy bleeding, but it's because I'm, I have so many clots to get out. So (laughs) clearly it needs to move. Um, and so along with that, like volume of, of blood, and then we talked about it it's starting, you know, heavier and getting lighter. But if you are going through um, one pad or two tampons in a couple of hours on your heaviest day, that's too much bleeding. And so we've also kind of like checked that box that like heavy bleeding can be normal um, and it's not typically normal. But there's also in a normal period, there's absence of breakthrough bleeding. You shouldn't have bleeding at other points in your cycle. It should start be nice and neat and concise and finish within a few days um, and be done and move on to the next part of the cycle pretty smoothly. Yeah, that's so powerful to to hear all of those different characteristics because I'm sure many women, myself included, have experienced some, if not more than one of those things that you just described of, you know, that's outside the norm, right? Um, like even like three days, like a three day period, like that sounds like so short. Cause I think growing up, we learn 
yeah, it's just like a week of your life where you're on your period and, you know, it's going to be painful and you're going to be moody and you're going to have um, acne. So I think just to say um, it doesn't have to be this way, it's, you know, not supposed to quote unquote be this way. And for anyone who's listening, who's like, that doesn't describe me at all. Like, is there hope to change your period or are we kind of just like stuck with what we've got? Thankfully, I mean, there's always hope for so many things, right? And uh, what happens in our bodies, it's not a vacuum, right? All of these systems are connected. And so uh, when we start to implement some simple changes, we absolutely see this ripple effect uh, in our bodies where basically these symptoms that you may be having, right? Like, oh, I'm having a, actually now I recognize my period is really heavy or man, I really do break out a ton. We recognize that's our body just talking to us. It's saying like, hey, I need a little help here and I'm just gonna communicate the best way that I can. And our bodies want to heal. They want to find this really good homeostasis. Uh, but the way that sometimes that happens when we can't get down to that root cause is it starts to you know, make some uh, shifts in other ways. And it's like, well, I'm not okay over here. Everything else I'm trying to keep down here. And so, uh, yes, there absolutely is help. It's been one of the sweetest things uh, to witness women come in to our office um, or take our, we have an online course as well, like take the, and be like, oh, I'm amazed at how I'm giving my, I'm reducing inflammation in my body and I'm giving the things, uh, I'm giving things my body really wants and I'm starting to see uh, this freedom start to appear. I can imagine the day when, right? And mm -hmm. uh, this type of care and this type of work that we do on our bodies is not an overnight uh, thing. And so it didn't also just pop up overnight either. And so we do have to work at it and it is a bit of a, of a long-term uh, thing, but it snowballs and our body really, again, really does want to heal. And so it's fun actually to be able to be like, here's where I'm starting and oh, all these things, but guess what? Like this month after working on these things, my headaches have decreased a ton or wow, like my skin is actually looking a bit better than it did last month or whatever. And so, um, yes, there is a lot of freedom and a lot of hope, but uh, it also takes some work too. And so that can be, can be daunting a bit, especially when there's an option to go into a doctor's office and be like, oh, you have something for me to take and, take, and maybe take this all away. That sounds nice. And certainly band-aids can be helpful, but uh, this root cause uh, cure really uh, is something that I think gets people like pretty fired up about their confidence and their ability to create change in their bodies. Yeah, it's so powerful to know what your body is trying to tell you. Like, mm -hmm. I love what you just said, your body wants to heal and it's trying to send you signals, right? Like, I feel like sometimes just because of the way we are taught growing up a lot of the time, we don't know how to interpret the signals from our body. And it's kind of like um, it, like a radio, like you're on the static channel where it's just like, it's just noise and just a little fine tuning. We can get you to music where you can say, oh, this is coming up. This is the sign that it means. And, you know, okay, I'm going to eat something differently the next day. Okay, I'm gonna give myself a little bit more sleep. Okay, I'm gonna give myself some more rest. So I love that you're hitting on this and really just reminding people like your body has everything it needs to succeed. We just kind of have to like get out of your body's way and understand the signals that it's giving you and interpreting it. So it sounds like um, this course that you have is kind of like laying out a roadmap for that. Would you say that's kind of like yeah, what you're I, aiming for? Um, don't realize or they forget or lose touch with that they have control over a lot of pieces of their life. And I think period problems feel very out of control. They feel very much like um, they're happening to you and you're not participating in it. And so we do, we tell people exactly what their symptoms mean, how to support their bodies in general. And then we get very specific with each symptom. So if you're, if you only have heavy bleeding, or you only have irregular cycles, or you only have PMS, we're like, these are the things you do in order to support your system with, with 
just the, you know, these pieces that you need. Um, and so people can actually do something about their circumstances. And then we, um, we have a bit of a follow-up um, program tied into it. So for 90 days, we're walking people through the changes they made and the things that they're seeing that are helping and how to adjust in those moments so that they can look back and say, okay, yes, it's not where I want it to be, but I'm working towards it. But these are the things that actually are improving. And that is very empowering when you feel like you actually can take control of your life experience, what's happening in your body. Yeah, a hundred percent. It sounds like you're almost like providing like an instruction manual for our bodies, which wouldn't it be great if we got that day one? <laughs> yes, honestly, that's a part of the course too, is about first periods. And so uh, whether you're a parent of a child who's entering into that stage or a tween yourself walking through the course with a parent or whatever, um, really talks about like, wow, we kind of missed the mark, right? Like we took this biology class that maybe we uh, maybe we did perfectly fine on that biology test, right? About like what our hormones are doing, but what does that actually mean for mm -hmm. us? What mm -hmm. is our body actually supposed to be doing? And why does this balance matter? And why does the dance between the hormones matter? Um, growing up, I never had any kind of awareness or discussion about any of this. And it wasn't until I had a baby <laughs> that I understood more about my body. And that was because right. I was trying to figure out if I wanted to actually get pregnant on purpose or not after that. Right. And so I was like, oh, I should probably understand more about what's happening in my body. Um, and so, yeah, I think we do. Uh, it's sweet to offer this um, as a bit of, as you said, like kind of an instruction manual type thing. Um, and we're hoping the more women who get hold of that information can then share that information with their kids with their girlfriends with mm -hmm. you know and that eventually we wouldn't need a course like this in some generation right because uh because this is common knowledge between right. um, like community members and parents and kids and all of that right right because there's other signals from our body that we learned growing up right like we know what hunger feels like we know what cold feels like we know you know some people have disconnected from this, but we know what it feels like to have to pee, right? And so it's like, it's possible to reconnect. It's possible to dive back in and start to have like a discussion between you and your body. And I love that you're creating this bridge for people who have periods literally all, all over the world because it's, it's a virtual course, right? So you can access it anywhere. It's awesome. So if you could tell anyone who's listening, like one place to start, is there like a common area where you're like, look here first for period problems? Yeah, I think, I think the thing that will help people the most on their journey, if they are wanting to, you know, kind of sort some of this out for themselves is to see the connection in what their hormones are doing in their body. And so it's really easy to get very isolated into what's just going on in the uterus and the symptoms that are coming right from there but all things lead back to what the hormones are doing. And we don't necessarily need to like go out and spend a thousand dollars on hormone panels and uh, you know, be scheduling fluid collection at certain parts in the cycle. And like, we don't need to, we don't need to go all out and do that, but um, starting to learn what is present in our lives that may be interrupting the hormone patterns that our bodies want to have in order to kind of get back on that homeostasis that Kelly was talking about. Um, and hormones in our bodies, they're just messengers. They're just signals. Every single system in our body is working um, to give messages. And reproductive hormones have their place, but they're also affected by all the other signals that are going on in our body. So we look at stress and how that potentially impacts hormones. We look at diet and how that potentially impacts hormones. We look at um, toxins in our environment, in our food, in our water, in our relationships. <laughs> and, that counts. <laughs> and how that is, you know, affecting um, the way that we move our body, the type of, the type of sleep we're getting and all of those external pieces 
contribute to the way that your body is trying to run and hormones have a lot to a lot to contribute to the reproductive nature of how your period ends up you know coming out that's awesome yeah I, I think you know knowing that there's so many different pieces of the puzzle and you know not not leading to a place of overwhelm like you have to be perfect in every area but knowing that there's so many different avenues that you can go down to see improvement in your life, right? You just named stress, you just named toxins, you just named sleep, movement, right? Like we can start small and take baby steps down one of those roads and add as needed. And so for anyone who's feeling like they want some ongoing accountability and support through a course like yours, um, where would they find more information about this? And how would they kind of get in touch with you or um, get started with that? Yeah, so uh, one of the places that they can find it is on our website, which is beautifulonemidwifery.com in uh, the shop tab there. Uh, the other place that we love to connect with people is on Instagram. Um, and our handle there is at beautifulonemidwifery. We have highlights about the course itself, lots of um, posts in our feed about it, as well as stories, uh, both from our personal experiences the course itself, um, other women's experiences with it, stuff like that. Um, and we're always available for any questions to about um, the course or about uh, what we provide. Awesome. And if anyone's listening to this or watching this and wants to hear more from you, you two have an amazing podcast too, which we haven't even mentioned. So um, you renamed it. It used to be Wine and Gine. <laughs> So um, where would they find your podcast and what are you talking about, you know, in this last episode that you released? Yes, the, um, the podcast name as of 2021 is Lady Stuff. We called it Lady Stuff with Tiffany and Kelly and kind of just brought in uh, a little bit more context for that whole life cycle. We ended up um, concentrating so much on like well woman and gynecology because there's a huge lack of information about alternative care out there for women. And so, um, but then we realized like, oh, we're home birth midwives. Like we're going to need to <laughs> talk about birth sometimes. <laughs> we're going to talk about birth sometimes too. So you can find us at Lady Stuff with Tiffany and Kelly and all, all the typical podcast platforms are, are streaming that. And our last episode actually was on sleep. And so we chatted about how do you, how do you, what do you have control over that you can actually get better sleep? That's amazing. That's, and you know what, like if anyone's like, where do I start? There you go. That's literally a roadmap right there. Sleep oh, yeah. episode of lady stuff out now. <laughs> Yes. And uh, episodes prior, we've touched on a lot of similar things that we've uh, hit on here. And there's uh, a wealth of, in the archive of information and uh, good tips and all that kind of stuff to dig into. Yeah. And Kelly and Tiffany truly are a huge wealth of knowledge. In case you couldn't tell today, there's so many things that we could have talked about. And um, I'm just so grateful for your time and for you sharing your knowledge with us today. Thank you so much for having us. We love always uh, talking with you. We sure do. Yeah, me too. All right, everybody ch go check them out. You won't be sorry. And their podcast is hilarious and informative. So what more could you want? 